Hi there, yep. It's Nick Dutch here yet again for another uh, very high production value. <laughs> okay, not so high production value video. Uh, I know I'm totally weird, I'm just digesting my dinner. I, it's one o'clock in the morning. So my work requires that I work incredibly strange hours, so uh, if you're trying to catch me and you're in the UK, uh, and you're an insomniac, then you're probably going to call me at just about the right time. Uh, but today, um, I'd like to talk a bit about rune stones. Now, the problem with a symbology which is very heavily connected to one particular magic or religious system, for want of a better word, is that the ceremonials of and the mythologies of the culture or the um, or the magic or religious system itself tends to take precedence above any form of actual practical or reliable quantity or quality of knowledge about how the symbols of the runes are actually used when doing any form of occult activity. As the mythology gets um, expanded, as, it, as the story gets adjusted by Chinese whispers, so to speak, more and more myths about the runes suddenly appear. As I'm sure you can appreciate with any uh, with anything of a supernaturalist nature, extra meanings and extra powers become attributed to things of an allegedly supernatural nature. So any original meaning is um, erased in many people's minds, which is probably why there is this common belief that the rune symbols are or have, in inverted commas, their own energy. I've had tons of people, well, I've had a fair chunk of people using the wonderful occult soundbite. The runes have their own energy. No one has actually defined to me what on earth they were talking because they don't actually know. They don't know the meanings of the words they're using, so I would argue that the world would be a better place if they didn't use them. But still they do. The runes themselves are letters of an ancient alphabet used by people in a certain part of the world, namely Northern Europe. There were various different runic alphabets for various different tribal people with some slight and subtle variations. The runes are connected, so to speak, with the pagan mythologies of those parts of the world. The runic letters symbolize, and it is just a symbolism, different aspects of the natural world. Part of the myth that the runes have their own energy is that there seems to be a similarity of experiences when people meditate on the various runic letters. But that only seems to be. All right? Any symbolism that you choose to meditate on will have an effect upon you. It's up to you as the experimenter to get to know the symbolical structure. Now if that means that you have to study the mythologies of um, the people of the symbolism, fine. If that means you have to study the religion of the people of the symbolism, then fine. But if you're any good, you may be able to work out what they mean with just the very basic cultural references, plus a bit of meditation and or contemplation. For instance, whenever you see the crescent or a half circle shape in anything, 
you will no normally know that that means the moon. You would normally know that that would refer to your subconscious mind or certain aspects of your spirit or possibly even sensitivity. And if the crescent will be pointing one way, it would mean one thing. If the crescent is pointing another way, it would mean another thing. If its horns uppermost, it would mean one thing. If its horns lowermost, it would mean another, another thing, which you can then work out with your own meditation. However, the crescent symbol does not appear in the runic mythology. They're all very angular letters which means they're very easy to visualize, which means they're very easy for you, for you or for yourself and a partner to actually stand in the same shapes as the various letters and then to chant their names or chant sounds associated with those particular shapes and to see what happens in your mind over a long extended period of time. Then the experience itself becomes part of your own workings and it becomes an association which you then apply to more meditations, creation of spirits based upon symbols and so on and so forth. That's it. That's the great mystery of the runes and I'm fitting it into a 10 minutes or less video. You have to find out the meanings of the symbols for yourself because this is as is all forms of magic, and I mean all forms of magic, experiment, which means it's you who has to do the experimentation rather than just to rely upon what someone else has said or what someone else has written. You see what other people have written just as suggestions or guidelines. Nothing more, nothing less. Whether you choose to use a circle format or not, that's up to you as well. Bearing in mind that the runes are just symbols and you're trying to work out what they mean, think for a minute, write down on a, on a piece of paper any variety of meaning to be ascribed to it, be it a, an animal, be it a mood, be it um, an elemental force, be it a state of mind, be it a personality, be it a character, being a certain set of colors, being it something that's happened in your day to day be it someone you know, be it a type of vehicle that you get pretty hot about, whatever. Think about it as, as a type of job, what particular job suits the um, Ansus rune or whatever. What particular job suits the Legu rune. Think about it and use that in your work. Then you can go through the processes of either the creation of spirits, invocation of that energy inside yourself and sending it through your arms when you're doing a healing, for instance. Then you can do everything else you wanted with it. You can do more exploratory work through visualizing a symbol on something like, like a curtain or a doorway and visualize yourself walking through it. You can visualize the rune itself as being the name of a demon itself which you can summon. You can visualize the rune itself or you can assume that the rune itself will be an angel of a certain type and you can then set about using your experience to create that particular sensation of the experience of that particular angel or demon and then make it do your will using some of the ideas that I mentioned on my demonology videos. It's just exp exploration, it's just fun all right? You're not doing this because you think it'll make you win the national lottery. If that had happened to me, then I, you know, I'd be able to pay all my direct debits, all my debt repayments, and I'd be living in somewhere damn sight bigger than this. Have fun with it. The, maybe the best thing that you can get is just a weird experience. Maybe the best thing you can get is um, a physical world results. But that's up to your explanation, exploration and your ability. I personally feel that if you haven't had spiritual experience, you don't know the state of mind of prayer, and you haven't done a lot of meditation, you won't be able to get anywhere. So remember that you've got to go on your own journey of development as well. And that's more or less all you got to know. That's a brief introduction to runic magic. Good fortune, God bless to everyone.